Some people do drywalling and some people uh, do another procedure where they take their money, they give it to a hardware store, the hardware store gives them drywall mud, and then they put all the drywall mud on the wall and then they sand it all off onto the floor, vacuum it up and throw it in the garbage. Contained in this tote are all of my drywall tools. <laughs> the necessary evil of any interior renovation project. The drywalling. I have not opened up this tote, I don't know, in a year at least. I haven't done any drywall work since last renovation season. What is inside a professional, oh, professional what? That's a, that's a loose term. I was getting a little cocky on that one. Sometimes I'm just a handyman, folks. Let's just do her one tool at a time. I want to I want to get into the look. It. Okay. This here's a good rule of thumb. You've seen inside my tool trailer. If you haven't, you got to go back through videos until you find it. I like to keep everything in containers specific to the task. It's a good way to keep a cap on what sort of tools you're hauling around. If it doesn't fit in the tote, then it doesn't need to be in here. I've kind of kind of narrowed down what I need. But as we go through and I show you what I have, hopefully somewhere in the viewership uh, is maybe somebody that knows a heck of a lot more about drywall procedures than I do. And maybe you can point out where uh, I might have a few gaps in my arsenal. I definitely have added and subtracted tools over time. So. All right, we're just gonna dig right into it. We're not getting into any specific order. I'm just gonna pick off the top. Everyone will recognize that. 12 inch trowel. It's nothing fancy. Marshalltown, pretty standard brand. This, and this is actually, I actually quite like this. If you're gonna get into doing interior work, dust is a killer. First of all, do yourself a favor. You tent and tarp off everything you possibly can. I don't care how you do drywall, there's gonna be some sanding, there's gonna be some dust, way she goes. But if you can mitigate it, now you're talking. Ventilation fan with a window, an air scrubber, if the job's big enough. There's some really fancy drywall sanders that I don't own. You wanna see something crazy? Festool makes a drywall sander that is dust free. I mean, by the time you spend seven or $8,000 on the tool, and the matching vacuum HEPA filter rig, it better be dust free. Cause you can never get away, even with a vacuum set up and everything, you cannot get away from having to sand nooks and crannies by hand and you're gonna get dust. But this is a very simple tool, rigs up to a vacuum. This is hollow and you use the mesh sandpaper so it can suck through and it allows you to do your rough sanding and it does, it, it does pick up a ton of dust. So I'll use that for uh, like the, f you know, you, you tape it and you get your first cut of, coat of mud on. And if so, if you got any knock down any high spots, I'll do this. I don't really enjoy the mesh paper. It leaves lines in the drywall mud and is not ideal for, for finish. Um, I got more stuff in here, we'll get to that. But that's what that's for. Hooks to the vacuum cleaner. Corner trowel, this is for an inside corner, pretty self-explanatory. Of course, the heater's gonna kick in. We're just gonna power through. This is why they call it amateur film, right? Now, again, in the comments, leave your opinion. Are you a corner trowel kind of guy, or do you go, you know what, I don't bother with that kind of stuff, it's a gimmick. I love the corner trowel for the first couple coats. For a finished coat, I'm just gonna take a regular drywall knife, right? I'm gonna finish the corners and all the returns one side at a time, okay? Because if you do one side of a corner and it's wet and you try and do the other side of a corner with just the knife, then the corner doesn't turn out awesome. That's my experience and again, like I said, a disclaimer at the very beginning, I'm by no means an expert, I just know what works for me. So this, this eliminates a, a lot of wait time. I find that once, like you can, t you tape a corner and then you get your first coat on. I'll just go like this with a knife, up, down, and then just one pass like this with one of these. Bob's your uncle. The challenge with these is you'll see that that's not a real sharp 90. So if you want like that, uh, that crisp corner, 
you're not gonna get it with a corner trowel because this, this is rounded out. So if I kind of had to sum up, summarize my thoughts on corners, this would be like, you know, by hand with the knife, like fine tuning with precision instrument. And uh, this is more like your sledgehammer, rough it in, get it done. This is just simply a four inch putty knife. I switched actually, this is a stainless steel knife, not because I love it, an old timer, the guy that actually did a lot of the drywall finish work in uh, our house, he would go like this. He had, his, he had a knife that was so wore down, I think he had it for 30 years. He's always going like that. Some guys like a super flexible knife and I think some guys like a little bit more stiff. I honestly don't, now like I'm not a dude every day so I don't notice the difference. I just like this knife because there's no edges there's no ridges, there's no crap rubber handle. This is super easy to wash. That is, that's the reason that I bought this knife. And I mean, it's plenty flexible enough. I like it. So I got a four inch knife. I'll put that with the 12 inch. Ooh, I know I said we'd go in order, but I'm gonna save that. What is in here? 15 minute speed dry polyfill for small holes and cracks. Well, this has been frozen about 57 times, so that's garbage. Simple sanding block. So unlike the mesh, this is a solid paper and there's no way to hook this up to a vacuum. But with different grits of paper, you're gonna get a way nicer finish on sanding out your joints, I find, with the solid. The mesh paper just leaves lines. All right, damn, heater finally shut off. Pan, that's what I was getting at. Stainless steel mud pan. I love this pan. So the stainless steel pan is you're gonna use in conjunction with a knife. Uh, I like the stainless steel one because it's easy to clean and it's durable and, well, they basically only make one size, so it's easy to manage, right? You get the idea? Of course you do, you guys have done this before, you know what you're talking about. Why do you have a plastic pan though? It costs like three, two, three dollars. Sometimes you have to mix stuff that you don't want in this pan. So when I get going, I'm mixing, I'm taping or whatever, so you got a batch of mud mixed up and it's only going in this pan, right? I'm not mixing matching. But say in the same reno job, in another room, I got like a little tiny repair that's taking place or, or something else. And uh, maybe you're mixing up like quick setting mud or you've got something totally different, I'll use this. Or if it's like particularly nasty, you know, so we used to do work on rentals and stuff like that. Because if it gets in this and it just gets full of crud or what, whatever, it can be chucked for three bucks, it can be chucked. This was not $3, so that one I, uh, I keep, keep separate. 8 inch knife. I don't use this much actually. Uh, if I had to narrow it down, if I, I had got, I got a 12, a 6, and a 4 inch, uh, I could probably just, I could chuck this. Honestly, you can see by the condition that it's in, I use it as a scraper more or less. And I have used it too for um, glue, flooring glue, shit like this. So sacrificial knife is always handy to have. This. This is, what do they, what do they call it? 10 inch multi-edge scraper. I use this to scrape buckets. Because, well, you wanna try and clean the buckets out as you go, or you're always buying new buckets. So this has been handy. You know, actually, if I had a tip to give you, the more things you have to scrape with, because that actually, I find, comes up a lot in doing drywall work, is you're gonna be inclined to scrape. Oh, there's dried up mud on the floor. I'm gonna scrape it, I'm gonna scrape it. Get stuff that is either sacrificial, where you know this is for scraping, or this plastic scraper, which was like $2, and use that for scraping. Never use the knives that you're actually trying to make money with to scrape, because you don't wanna damage the edges, because, you know, chips and scrapes show up in the, the finished product. A one inch knife, you know, nooks and crannies. And it comes into play once in a while. So I've got one of those, one of those. Of course, you're gonna have one of these. I don't even need to tell you what that is. And, uh, you know, customized. So I'd knock six inches off the end so it would fit in the tote. The old mixer. 
feeling real good to get the tote cleaned out, you know? Here's something that's gonna hit the ditch for sure. Why? Look at, there's three rolls of it. Fiberglass drywall tape. Now, you're gonna go on YouTube and you're gonna look up and there's 57,000 reasons why you should use fiberglass tape in this scenario. And you should do paper tape in this scenario. If you're patching something that's like a pretty decent hole, or you're doing like, like I said, we used to do work on rentals, then the, this, this self-adhering, well, if you can even call that, it's kind of sticky. Yeah, it's still sticky. You cut it, you stick it, you mud it, and you're pretty good to go. Um, that's what it's for, in my opinion. This is repair tape. This is not for finishing a room from brand new. Paper tape paper tape because you can do corners and you can work with it like a normal human being and not be super frustrated. One of the few tools here that I own that is not cordless because again, I don't do drywall for a living all the time so I don't mind an extension cord. Roto zip. If you don't know what a roto zip is, what do they say it is? It's a spiral saw. Pretty self-explanatory, right? It's uh, this is just strictly has a bit for doing drywall. So the drywall bit is gonna have a pilot on the end of it. So about a quarter inch on the end here has no cutting teeth. And uh, what you do is you, when you're putting your board up, you don't measure and cut around every single little um, electrical outlet. You're just gonna mark a location. This is where the box is. Plunge in, move over till you feel the side of the box and then you buzz around, pop, it's a perfect fit. Man, do you, can, can you just keep catching the eye, your eye on the boat here, old Judith, that we, we fixed up? Man, it makes me looking forward to some warmer weather, man. I can't wait to get on the water. Another tool I don't have any success with or use, this is the same idea as this. One is an innie and one is an outie. And the outie, I, I don't know, man. I just, I get the principle but I don't like it. I find that no matter how, what you do, because this is pre-shaped, right? This is a self-explanatory. That's not a 90. When you force it in, bow, wow, 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 it does that, right? It, you force it to the shape you want. Well, the outside corner, you force it on there to, to get to that 90. You got so much force on these edges, all it does is it just sweeps all the mud off the outside corner. Uh, catches the paper on your corner bead. For me, it just mucks up the whole operation. Why is this in here? I don't know, but they're a family, so we're just gonna keep them together. This is what I wanna get into. This is where we split into two different style of drywalling techniques. Uh, and I personally do not have a preference towards either one. I use them both. This is a hawk. This is a trowel. This is a pan, this is a knife. What team do you fall into? Are you a hawk and trowel guy? Are you a knife and pan kind of folk? Or do you just mix it all together? I'm gonna to tell you right now, I mix it all together. Small jobs, hands down. Knife and pan, done deal all the time. Corners, well, knife and pan. Big flat joints, flat work, you just, you just, you just whistling. You got 20 feet. You got these seams like in the background that no, no one's ever actually even bothered to tape. Never mind finish. Well, now I'm talking hawk and trowel. Sounds like a hawk and trowel. I don't know. You gotta get to get the motion right. And then of course with the pan, you know, it's just a little bit different. Oh, don't get too fancy. That's the only trick I know. You know, you're gonna, you know, like that. I find this cleaner, it's contained in the pan. I'm trying to do a good job because I don't want to do a lot of sanding. Well, what will happen, especially if you're on a ladder or something, well, I'm busy, I'm busy mucking with something, whatever, and then look what I'm doing with the, the hawk here. Oh, oh, I look over, oh man. You know, lava slide, globbed on my foot, whatever. The pan, it's just like carrying a bowl of soup. 
right? I could carry a bowl of soup around like this, have a conversation with you, and just somehow the human body is naturally inclined to keep this flat from spilling. I don't know why that is, it's just humans are built that way. I don't get that feeling from this. I'm not like, if I'm not visually looking at it, this happened and So I mix and match them together. You tell me what you do. I have two items here and you can tell they're near and dear to me because they're actually still in their boxes. These are Columbia Tool Tomahawk trowels. Oh my God. I am telling you, okay? Well, first let's show you what they are. This, uh, I'd say that box has gotten went, wet once or twice. It's the kind of tool that just kind of makes it look like you know what you're doing, okay? These are for skimming flat surfaces. And I am telling you right now, that if you are at all at a point where you have to do a little bit of drywall, but when it comes to these sort of tools, you're like, man, I am struggling. I'm struggling because what, that we can all get through the first couple coats, but then that, that final finish coat, that's where you want it to shine because you want a lot more time on these tools and not a lot of time on these tools. So I'll let you have a look at that. You kind of get an idea of how these would work, right? They, they're very, so like that, like this Wolverine. I don't even, is that what Wolverine does? I don't know. So I bought a seven inch and an 18 inch. The beauty of these is unlike this, this is extremely flexible. The blade's replaceable. So if it gets nicked or chipped, you don't have to chuck the entire tool. You can get a new blade. Now, the reason I bought a seven inch and the 18 inch Tomahawk is for finishing. This has an extremely flexible blade. The edges are just rounded, okay? So they don't leave that sharp line as you go. I got the seven inch because I find it like super, super awesome for doing corners, returns, and small flat surfaces. You're gonna skim out mud with this as long as you got it mixed right, way flatter and smoother than I have ever gotten with any of these tools. So totally worth it, the seven inch for the small stuff and then obviously the 18 inch for the big stuff. Now they had an 18 inch, a 24, they go like 36, 40, all the, they got like a four foot one, all right? Now, if you're skimming ceilings, a wider one would have been good, but you know, we're, uh, we're budget conscious, okay? Protective strip on the edge, same idea. You're skimming this, you can get two hands on it like this, right? And you can, but it takes a heck of a lot less energy to use that tool than it does to use this tool and be, you know, skimming out the ceiling because the way this is built, it's just like a set of handlebars. You can just grab right on. And me, I'm like very fortunate because in a standard residential home with eight foot ceilings, I can just stand like this and I can skim the ceiling without standing on a ladder or a stool with this. It's just enough that I can get blade pressure. You put the mud on and, uh, and you skim it out. So these are the shining star of my whole kit. I love them. I love them. Our whole variety of sanding pads, right? I got both the mesh, basically from 80 grit through to 220, I got them in the um, solid and the mesh. This is a rasp, like a, just a hand rasp, sharp. Look, at, it's like a cheese grater for drywall. Well, that's gonna bug me. I paused the video because I thought I had one more thing to reveal. It's missing, don't you hate that? All right, I found it. Man, well one, I needed it, and two, I just, the video felt incomplete without finding the dang thing. Dun, 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 my tape reel. Just like that. This got a thing on the side, like that. Well, it's, the roll's on backwards, but you know, you get the idea. Oh, and I also found this is a proper bucket scoop. See the curvature, five gallon bucket. That's what that's for. Ah, man, I got one of everything lurking every freaking place.